get started here. It's about five after. There's might be a few people still trickling in here a little bit, but. All right, so welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Brian Teeter. I'm the Pheasants Forever uh, Prescribed Fire Coordinator for the state of Nebraska. Um, we're going to be talking a little bit about this um, this system here called Arc Pyro uh, that we've kind of set up over the last couple of years and been using throughout the state for our staff um, and other folks through the game of parks have been kind of using to uh, help write burn plans with uh, to help in kind of the mapping process and and the way this kind of came about is you know everybody um, our staff we've got about 25 biologists uh, in our state right now well uh, what was happening was everybody kind of had was doing their own thing and so there was uh, a lot of inconsistencies and changes and maps and and so basically we looked at it and said you know what would be a better process or a better way to um you know to to make maps in a system that uh provides some consistency with staff across the state and ease uh to write burn plans and so we basically kind of come up with a system uh to kind of provide a template for everybody to to make their maps and i, I want to start off too by saying i'm not a gis expert by any means whatsoever um, i'm just a, a kind of hobbyist and obviously use it for my job um, so, you know, this, this can be, you know, adapted to your state, um, you know, improved, changed, however, you know, I mean, the main goal is to, um, use it to get more fire on the landscape. So, um, what we're going to do today is basically just kind of talk about <clears throat> the, you know, how the system is kind of set up and how to use it. And then I'm also going to go through a little bit about, uh, using it with our, our GIS pro. Um, there is an ARC map um, version of it. Uh, we do, it, last year, we got away from using that because it's just, you know, it's it's obviously going to be obsolete in a few, a number of years. Um, and so, and it's, I found it just way easier to work with, a lot smoother. So if you haven't transitioned ArcGIS Pro, you know, I would certainly suggest you taking a look at that, um, you know, in your organization or personally. And, and you can download it. Uh, there's a you know version where it's like 100 bucks a year uh, to use uh, for non-commercial purposes as well for that. So um, the system is basically set up uh, really straightforward and really easy. I also want to mention too, if you got questions, feel free to jump in the chat or raise your hand in there, and I'll I'll see if I can catch you there and answer your questions. So. So we'll get started here. Let's see if I can share my screen. All right, so if you, uh, in the link that I had sent out, uh, you can download a basically a zip file uh, for that, uh, for basically everything. And then when you unzip that file, just make sure you put it in your documents and, you know, on that same folder structure. So basically, you know, just the whole folder, Arc Pyro into, into Arc Map or into your uh, document section there. And you'll see within that structure, there's a folder for Arc Map, uh, which is kind of the older version that's going to be obsolete in a, few, in a number of years. And then Arc Pro. And then there's a couple different things in here. So baseline data, this baseline data is going to be stuff that is, you know, basically static and it's not going to change. So with ours is Nebraska, Nebraska specific, but, you know, if you use it for a different state, you could create your own baseline data and plug it in there. And then we have things in here like our fire department contacts, different information in there for it's Nebraska specific. We also have layout templates area where we're going to put our prescribed burn plans and then our layer files which pretty much applies back to mark map and then our shape files and there's also instructions on there so you know it's a really you know if you there's a couple different options that you can use within um, arc pro or arc map 
And I'm going to go through, I'm going to do Arc Pro, but basically this, the situation or how would you use it for Arc Map is basically the same structure. So under Arc Pro, there is basically two different ways you can use this system. There's a standalone version and then there's a template version. So the standalone version, if you open that up, um, you'll see that it already has a, a geo database in there in a standalone. So basically, if you if we opened up the standalone version, we'll see pull it up here. The standalone version uh, is basically ready to go. So you can immediately start planning your prescribed burn uh, with the structure and everything in it, and it'll all save onto one file. So if you're if you're per, if you're planning to prescribe burn for um, you know multiple landowners or multiple sites, they would all be stored under the same geo database. And so if you were planning one burn unit and that burn unit was next to you know right next to another burn unit you're planning, you know your um, symbols and maps can become fairly cluttered. Um, but if you're just want to open it up and start planning right away, um, you're able to um, pull this up and basically start planning as is because it's already connected to the geo database there. And this is a really good option if you're just kind of playing with it um, and want to open it up. But what we typically, the way I use it is a little bit different. So I'll pull it out. So in the Arc Pro template, so how I use that, so you can see that if you open up the Arc Pro template as it is, So when you open it up, you can see the difference here is on the left side here. The shape files are not connected, so the data source is not connected to anywhere. So we need to uh, connect that to a data source. And the way we do that is uh, we'll back out of here. So the way I do that is I'll go back to the main structure folder. And then I'll go into Go just click on the prescribed fire shape files, hit copy, and then I'll go to my burn plans. And then I'll create like a folder with like the landowner name. And then we just paste that those shape files into um, that folder. And then we can go back, open up our template. And then once you open up that template, you want to maintain the, the integrity of the original template. Um, you know, if you don't change anything on there. So what you'll go do now is just go back. And hit save as. And then go back to our. folder where we copied and pasted those shape files in and then just name it, you know, after the landowner or the, you know, the burn site that you're that you're planning on. So you see now our our name has changed in that original Arc Pro template structure file is already in place. And so now that we still have to go back and repair our data source, you know, for this. And so you basically can click on any one of these uh, exclamation points.
And then you go back to your folder structure. Back to that place where you put those shape files in. And basically scroll down to whatever one that you've selected. And what this will do is basically repair all the broken broken links and data sources for all the ones that are um, have got the exclamation point. You can see there that they've all all changed. And then you can see, so the baseline data down here at the very bottom, these are all, this is the baseline data that was already connected. So you don't need, typically won't have to do any connections uh, for that data because it's already connected back to that original folder structure under the baseline data. So in the, in the ARC Pro, so now basically we've kind of got several things here. We, we kind of broke them down a little bit so we've got hazards, access safety, ignitions, fire breaks, and then drop points. So we basically have all these different uh, shape files with their symbols already attached to them for use to design your burn plan. So, you know, it's basically you could use that to basically just start planning. So, you know, for example, if we want to start planning a burn here, get rid of this. So you can see these uh, on the left side here, you know, they've got these different um, different shape files and everything with their symbols on them, ready to go. Um, and feel free, you know. So basically, if, if you're not familiar with Arc Pro, you can change these symbols. You know, you click on the symbol, and over here on the right side, there's a place where you can change the symbol. You can actually change the properties of the symbol you can change it you know the color of it the size of it um, you know different things with it you can change it completely um, really easy to do there's several different um, several different things you can use you know go through those properties and stuff like that so a lot of times what happens is when we're, we're planning a burn or something like that um, you know a lot of times we'll need to adjust the size of it or scale of it or maybe change it out uh, as far as like the color of a of uh, a certain thing just so because sometimes they clash because there's a lot of different different things on there um you know and we've had you know biologists as they've used this you know a lot of people will you know you can change the file names of these pretty easy and we'll talk a little bit about that here in a bit um and you can also add stuff to the geo database as well but you know, so we're kind of kind of gone through that whole process and we're kind of going through there. So now we'll kind of just talk a little bit about, you know, how to use it uh, as far as the Arc, Arc Pro GIS or ArcGIS Pro. Um, it's really simple. I mean, they kind of almost set it up. It kind of looks like a um, um, Microsoft Windows or Microsoft Word kind of layout. So it's kind of really familiar, should be really familiar. But there's several different things that you know we want to make sure that uh, we want to do and i'll start off just by simple editing so if you want to basically pull this up and just start writing or start making maps you know the easiest thing all you need to do is go to your edit tab up here and under edit tab you just want to hit create and then basically you just pick what you want to start with on here so let's say we want to put in a mode fire break or a natural fire break here. So we're going to click on our natural fire break over here. So it opens our visibility. And then over here on the right side, you'll just click on that natural fire break. 
And then it already selects it. So now you're ready to basically plan your natural fire break. So, you know, this is a road, so we could use this as a, a natural fire break. So we got that on there. Um, what if we did, and then we could add something else like a mode fire break. Again, it pops up over on the right side here. Just kind of click it. You can go in. Add where your mode fire breaks are going to go. Maybe you want to put in dist fire break, click over there. And then, you know, we basically can put, you know, all these different things you can add, add to it. You know, if there's areas that you want to put in, let's say that you want to just identify these as hardwood trees. Click on that you can add that these are all hardwood trees here. Show them that they're not cedars. Pretty simple and easy process. Um, again, if you want to delete something, Obviously, the, uh, there's a select right next to this uh, under the edit tab. Be able to highlight it. It's going to ask you if you want to delete it. Then there's a bunch of different tools up here you could use as well for for doing that, but pretty straightforward process as far as using these. Um, you know, to to add stuff to to the actual map um you know we got we got places for like adding draw points so you know one of the problems we just added like uh i think it was last year before is you typically would have to go in and actually use a text box to create draw points so we just created a symbology with these drop points and add them on there and then typically what we need to do with these draw points is you know they're they're at a standard size right now but again, we can go in and change that symbology just by clicking on that symbol. And then going over here to the right side and maybe changing the, the size of it. And then you see it kind of changes, changes that. And then of course you can save all your edits, um, you know, for future use for that. So basically, once you're kind of done kind of creating your map and adjusting the map for, for what you really want, uh, it's really easy to create <clears throat> and share the maps as well, you know, once it's already on there. And that's easily done by going to your share tab. Um, oh, I guess I better back up and go to the maps. Uh, how to create it so you can you can share directly from it but if you want to create like your own map uh, so on our burn plans we cr typically create like a two mile map we do like a lidar interface map and then we do ignition and then we also do like a fire break and hazards um, and they're already in the, kind of in this um, template so you can kind of choose what what you want to do uh, but these can be obviously changed names so if you click on these tabs to the right, so right here, this goes back to our burn plan. This is where we're actually going to plan our burn right here for. And then if we want to create like a map that we can print out attached to our burn plan, these tabs over here um, you can use to to do that. So. Yeah.
in here. Um, so basically, when you get to this map, we're going to need to add um, our map. So you go to the insert tab. And then you're going to go to map frame. And then once you open that up, you basically just kind of click and drag open. That map. And then. You can adjust it. Go to layout. Then you want to hit activate. And that's basically going to activate the frame. So you can scroll in and out to what you want for um, scale. So you can get zoom it in or zoom it out. And then once you're done, you need to close activation. Then you go back to the insert table. Um, you could add a logo, you know, your agency logo or anything like that to it. Um, you can add um, surrounds. So up here, if you want to add, you know, a picture like our logo here, or if you want to add um, a legend in the legends frame, you can just click on legend. You can insert your legend down here. Put in scale bars. Here's your arrows. All these different things um, you can add to it. You can create text boxes. We add information here and the graphics and text. You can add that text there and then uh, also manipulate it, change it, the properties of it for whatever you need it for. So once you kind of got all that put together, Obviously, over here on the right side, one of the things that we see too is uh, those drop points. We typically don't need a legend to see those in the legend. So if you go over here on the right side, you can click off of those, and it gets rid of um, gets rid of the oh, wrong one. Sorry. It's not showing up. Well, I apologize. I thought that uh, there should be a way to uh, pull that off without having it disappear from the actual map. But anyway. Like I said, I'm not a GIS expert, so. Uh, there is a way to do that. I guess I just don't know where it's at right now. So once you kind of get your map situated and you know where you uh, where you like it, um, it's really easy to share it as maybe a PDF or something like that. So you go to your share tab and then you're going to want to go to export layout. And then over here on the right side, it's going to give you, um, you know, a place or what what you want to do it. You can do it in all different types of formats. Uh, we typically just use PDF. And then we'll go to go back to our folder where our planning our burn at. You can save it there. And you could check any boxes over here that you need and then just hit export. Then you can see it. Exports it for you. Um, 
right there as a, as a nice, nice map for you. So overall, it's a really, really simple, quick way to, to write your burn plans. You know, at least get the maps done on them uh, for that. There's a couple things that I use on here that uh, make it easier for me. Um, so some of the like most common features that I use, you can actually use uh, basically like a create. So your edit feature, you can right click and then you go to like add quick add to quick access toolbar. And what that does is put everything that you typically use or want to use up in this top left hand corner which gives it really easy access for, for everything for you to use um, for that. You can also change base maps on here as well. You know, they got all the different base maps that you could choose like the topographic maps, uh, terrain of labels, things of that nature that you could use for that. Um, another one is like the major one. So if you're measuring distance or area, can use that here as well. So you can measure acres. And then of course, if you want to save this, uh, so basically, you know, if you write a burn plan map and you send it out for review, um, you know, by saving it this way, you know, you could come back at a later time and easily edit, change, you know, edit and put changes on there uh, for future use. Or if you know, in several years, you had to come back to it and update it. Uh, you know, it's already there, so this file, that file structure, it is already going to be there. So if you go back to our, so basically it'll save that, you know, you can save it, uh, come back to it for future uses. Are there any questions so far? Okay. So one of the other things that we uh, that I really like using with this ArcGIS Pro um, is with this LiDAR imagery. So you can add data um, for it. So with LiDAR, we are typically, let's see. So a LIDAR is really a uh, really good thing to use uh, in the planning process. You know, if you're in hilly terrain, uh, there's a couple of different ways. You can obviously use it with the bare, bare hill shade, or you could come in and actually kind of do an overlay, uh, which kind of creates really cool maps. And all you need to do that is to click on that hill shade, and then go up to this raster layer under appearance. Go to layer blend. And I typically just use uh, overlay as the default. And I typically use uh, the stretch type. I usually go to the ESRI. And you can see that kind of gives us um, kind of integrated LIDAR with our actual map. You know, so if you're planning a burn and you can see, you know, where the ridge tops are, 
uh, without you know um, you know with the with the actual landscape vegetation and stuff on it it just makes it a lot easier for planting and prescribed burns um, you know especially in, in hilly country so it's really easy you can also manipulate you know your layer brightness So you could have a lot, uh, you know, brighten it up, or you could change the contrast, things of that nature as well. So it's really simple. So if you want to, I guess we'll move into a little bit about um, how do we how do we add or change. Or how do we add in new new shape files? Um, and if you're going to do it, there's a couple different things you need to think about. One, if you're going to be just changing or adding one, um, if you're just going to be doing it for like this specific map or the standalone, that's one thing. But if you're if you want to change like the system completely, you would have to go through the process of um, basically updating that template and then using that template for you know the future future uses. Um, so we had a question coming. LIDAR layer data. Uh, I I got that. So I contacted our state NRCS office and they I shipped them a um, external hard drive and they just copied it for me. So I would suggest getting a hold of them. You can download it online. Uh, but it's much easier just to contact the state NRCS GIS specialist or the data specialist and just send them a I send them a two terabyte external hard drive and they just copied it on there. So So we'll go in and we'll talk about um, how to add or change things. So first thing you want to go to is your uh, view button. And in your view button, hit the catalog. So we'll go back and I'll show you. So in your databases, uh, typically you don't you have there's no database connected to it right now. It doesn't show it. So you actually have to right click this database and just add database. And then go back to. Go back to that same folder that you created earlier and click on the that database and then add it. All right, so now here on the left side under your contents pane, you can see that it changed on there uh, or added that prescribed fire planning um for that so you can see so if you wanted to change something um, you could go in and change the name of it just right click properties that's not working because I haven't saved the uh, edits on there.
Yeah, right? it's still not working. Well, I guess the other option for you to do it um, is you can go over here and just change it uh, from this side as well. So, you know, if you want to change your name of the airport to something else, um, you can add add that on there. Change the name of those properties. But if you wanted to um, add something in it, so if there's additional things that you want to actually add to add to this, um, you could go in and add. So you'd go into go over to your catalog pane again, go into that database, and then you can add a new feature class, and then you can basically add whatever you want. Um, You could add something that you know, maybe a clear cut. And then you have the option of choosing if it's going to be a polygon line or a point. basically just click through the rest of this. And then you can see over here on the uh, left side. That it adds. That it adds an area for the shape file that you just added. And you can move. Um, you know, these things into different categories. So if you want to add it to the access and safety or hazards or, um, you know, or even create your own, you could go ahead and just easily add that um, into it. Any other questions coming up? Is there anybody that's not using uh, ArcGIS or GIS Pro? Yeah, like I said, I think, you know, the difference between Arc Map versus Arc Pro is, is huge and, you know, is, you know, much easier interface. The question was that you probably should start using Arc Pro. Like, yeah, I think the, the interface is so much better. It's a lot faster. Seems like when I use Arc Map, it's just slow and sluggish and just takes forever for stuff to load. And so, yeah, switching over to Arc Pro is big. Um, and it takes a little bit to get used to to kind of find out where stuff is, but. It is, it's really so much easier to, to, to use it, so. So, I mean, that's basically kind of the, the gist of, uh, you know, how to use this. It's pretty simple, easy to add stuff, easy to uh, take away stuff, change symbols, um, integrate it, you know, for your own needs. Like I said, you know, if you're going to use it for a different state, you know, uh, if you can't figure out how to do it, just let me know and I can I'll be certainly willing to help. Um, but the biggest thing is that you'd open up that template, you know, and have to change the template, you know, swap out the baseline data and all that stuff for it. Um, and, and be able to use it, so um, feel free to, to kind of adapt it to your needs or your situations and kind of make it your own. Uh, if you do make edits to it or whatever, just give me a shout, you know, and let me know how you're, you know, if you've got ways to improve it. I'd certainly like feedback from that. Like I said, I'm not a GIS pro whatsoever. 
Um, this is basically just a tool that we kind of put together to, to make mapping our prescribed burns uh, much easier. Um, we're kind of creating the same thing uh, for our biologist in the future for you know doing habitat management work and all that stuff. So it's kind of the same structure. Uh, so basically, you know, they can open it up and start planning their habitat improvements and mapping invasive species and um, areas of plantings and all that stuff. So um, it's a really it's really cool, uh, really easy to use. Um, and, and hopefully we kind of set it up to a point where, you know, it's pretty easy to use. You know, there's probably a lot of different things that we could, you know, I could go in. I'm probably not qualified to teach an entire how to use ArcGIS Pro, but there are a lot of resources out there. You know, just even on the, the GI Esri website, they've got those tools on there. Um, you know, they have like a eight hour long session that you can go on and basically kind of teaches you all the different stuff on there uh, on how to utilize it. But really, you know, if you use GIS quite a bit in your job, it should be an easy transition over to the to the pro. Um, you should be able to figure out how to use it. So. See question. If you're planning two units next to each other, is there a way to toggle off the symbology for one unit so it doesn't clutter with the map of the other? Yeah, so if you know, so if you're going to if you're gonna do multiple units that are side by side, you probably want to just create separate maps for each one or separate, you know, do separate um, do separate folders. Because if you did it all on just one standalone, there's really kind of no way to turn off or toggle off symbology for one unit versus the other. And the cool thing about the Arc Pro or GIS Pro structure is that their files are, aren't as large as they are in Arc Map, and so it literally is very negligible space in order to um, uh, to, to create another file or another folder on it. Yep, I absolutely can. Uh, somebody asked if I can run through Arc Map real quick, and I can certainly do that. So again, uh, it's basically you know kind of the same structure. So you know in the Arc Map, there's two different ones. So there is a uh, fire template standalone. So again, this is basically just going to do a standalone version. And this is the reason why I switched to ArcGIS Pro because it's taken forever to load. And Maya, do you, are you on a Pheasants Forever um, GIS plan? Yeah, I actually just as as we've been sitting here, I've just sent an email to Yearly asking if uh, if I could get my hands on Arc Pro. <laughs> yep, absolutely. So I I did that a couple of years ago, and 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 we can do that because they're they, they're on the same license, so we can get. Um, you just got to add you to the plan. So. Yeah, after watching you just do that, while I've I've had it open this whole time, um, and have mostly been waiting on it to load to try to fiddle with it so <laughs> yep that sounds about right so again so so here's the arc uh, arc map template you know same thing so this is just the standalone version again it has all the um all of the uh, shape files are already kind of tied already into that one folder so you could basically just go ahead and plan that um, for that um, or if you want to do it 
basically the same way as we did on the other one where we basically kind of open the template and then we connect it back to the actual um, shape files. So you'll go in. Just create another map in here. Map. So it's the same, same, basically the same thing where we're going to go in and copy our shape files. Go back to our burn plan folder. And then we're going to paste those in there. And then once you wait for three to four hours for ArcMap to open up, uh, it's basically the same exact thing as where, and you're going to have to forgive me, I haven't used ArcMap forever. But I think on this one, you just. There we go. Double click it. <clears throat> Again, then just basically going back and connecting to. And then you can see it basically connects all that on there as well. Um, and then you can basically, you know, do the same thing as far as planning wise. And again, I haven't used arc mapping for so long, but I think I might remember. Yeah, so they've got a different. Right, so just doing. What's that? Uh, so that what you're doing right now is what I was just doing, but I was only able to get it to to let me create a shape file for or to create a polygon for the burn unit. Um, I couldn't I couldn't get it to let me do any of the other ones. Oh really? The uh, so you may have to go so you'd have to go on like be sure you click on the uh, icon or the checkbox. So once you click on that over on your right side, you'll see, you know, it shows up over there and then you'll click on it. You know, basically the same thing that And you can change the layer name. Change symbology. All those things. The same way. So basically it's the same process for both, but the, the way you kind of create stuff is just a little bit different in the ArcMap than it is in the ArcGIS Pro. Did you get oh. it to work? Yep, I got it. Nice. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, and so yeah, the creation of like new shape files in the arc map is a little bit different too, because you got to open up our catalog and it's like kind of another outside thing. So the reason why I like ArcGIS Pro so much is because it's all integrated into the same uh, same thing. You don't got to open up a completely different app and all that stuff on there. And so, yeah, the process too, you know, if you wanted to update for your state too, if you want to do that in, in arc map, um, you know, you'd have to go in and save the layer files and stuff that too, because it's all again, not integrated like ArcGIS pro is. So that's why those layer files are in this is because those layer files are tied to, to those arc map. Whereas arc pro everything and all the symbols and everything is all stored into, um, into that actual file within the file structure so it just kind of keeps everything on there but the big you know the big thing is is you know if you look at the instructions too hopefully i got those right but the big thing is just copying and pasting these uh, shape files um, 
into your landowner burn plan or your prescribed burn plans into that folder structure and then connecting it back to it, which basically kind of creates it. So if you if you just created if you did if you didn't do that, if you didn't copy and paste those individual shape files into an individual folder and you tied it everything back to these regular shape files in this folder, then basically no matter how many different times or how many different plans you opened up, the templates you opened up, they would all refer back to that same data. And so if you had burns all within, you know, the same section or township, they would all show up on there because it'd all be stored in that same file structure. So just copy and pasting it into those new uh, new folders and then connecting to that folder is, is pretty key. You know, if you want my if you wanted to if you want to set something up for Arkansas too, you can feel free to reach out to me as well and I can help you guys set up something for for Arkansas with ArcGIS Pro or, or something. So if you need any help. Yeah, that sounds great, man. I I really like the looks of this. This looks like it will make my life a lot easier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it saved our staff, you know, a bunch of time just having kind of a, some sort of template on there just to, you know, open up and make it easy to use. So, Yeah, this is awesome. I just need to get Arc Pro. Yep. Yeah, your will take care of you. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Comments? You know, the one thing too that we found out um, just a couple things to look out for is uh, if you have a system that's on the cloud so all your data all your data is on the cloud sometimes it you know it takes longer for that cloud to access data so your system can be a lot slower so especially if you're using art map um, ArcMap just takes forever to pull stuff off the cloud. So that's why I always recommend trying to put it on your actual my documents in your actual drive. Because um, it helps pull that data a little bit faster. But if you could, if you have time to sit around and you know, wait for it to pull that data and some systems are different. It kind of depends on how how closely you are tied to. Um, your network, you know, if your network's in a different state or whatever, then it takes a lot longer than you know, if it's on site or something like that. Yeah, I'm thoroughly impressed, man. I've got like half of Nebraska blocked out in burn units now. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Well, cool. Yeah, if nobody has any other questions, you know, like I said, uh, feel free to reach out to me if you got questions on, you know, how to use it or, you know, how to change it and manipulate it for your state or for your specific situation. Um, I'd be more than happy to do it. Um, you know, again, I think, uh, you know, feel free to kind of use this idea and make it your own for your state or your area or your personal self. I know we've got, you know, biologists in our state that, you know, have changed symbols and, you know, and that's, you know, for me, it's not a big deal. Um, you know, just trying to stay in the level of consistency a little bit, but, um, you know, certainly feel free to, to use it however you wish. So the goal is to get more fire on the landscape. So, um, yeah, I'll, uh, this is recorded and we'll put it on, uh, put it on our Nebraska Pheasants Forever YouTube page if you want to kind of refer back to it or check it out. Um, and then, uh, yeah, feel free to reach out to me whenever, whenever you need. OK, 
got a couple people typing questions here, so. There are instructions in here on how to kind of go through that and use that too. I don't know if everybody got that. All right, it looks like there's no more questions, so we uh, got on about an hour, which is great. So, um, like I said, I'll be on our Nebraska Pheasants Forever YouTube channel, and uh, also feel free to reach out to me and if you got any questions. Be happy to answer them. So, thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, question, um, toolbox tool that would automatically pop. Are you talking about the, um, like in the, like the map? So like the, like legend and all that stuff automatically added, had those. I'm hearing that question, right? Like I guess I'm not a GIS expert, so.
Yeah, if you would, that'd be great. Like I said, I'm not, uh, I know how to kind of map stuff and write burn plans, but unfortunately I'm not uh, too good on some of the more advanced GIS stuff. So if you have to figure out something, please send it along, that'd be great. I know I had a problem you know, creating those maps, like I had to have automatically update each of those maps and for whatever reason it wasn't working in um, in RGIS Pro, so. Awesome. Thank you. We'll see you.